So I have a fun plan today. I am going to take the bodywork off this 1990 World Championship bike of mine. The bodywork, all of it, has not been off since I've owned it since 1993. Should be a fun project. So, a little history about this bike that I'm about to take the bodywork off for the first time. Um, it's my 1990 World Championship bike, the first year I won the World Championship with Yamaha. It was a pretty dominant bike that year. It was a narrower bike, but they had lightened it up. I think the weight limit that year was 115 kilos. And um, we had Michelin tires on for the first time. So I think there was 15 races, and this bike was on the podium, and 14 of them. The 15th one, we were actually running second in Hungary, I believe it was, behind... Mr. McDoin and uh, our brakes faded to where they did not work. So I had to pull in. But it's sitting in my shop now, and we're about to undress it. Remove the fuel tank and the tail section. And it's pretty interesting because you can see there's quite a lot of dust from 30 years of setting, 30 plus years. But you can also see the speck of the cylinder. Bud Axlin, he was our engine man that um, uh, still sets there as is, last touch. But slowly getting there. Got the fairing off. Other than it being really light, these little pads here were uh, that protected the fairing from the exhaust heat, from the exhaust pipe. That red spray bar is from a contact cleaner from 1990. And these, this molded piece here was to keep uh, rainwater off the back tire so you'd have more grip in the wet. So that deflected the water out and uh, it must have worked. We won a few races that year in the rain, or at least one that I can recall at Spa, Belgium. So, pretty cool. Something you don't see often on these bikes is the exhaust pipe layout from underneath. As you can see, the, the pipes have to fit and uh, have to have a lot of clearance and fit up tight to the bike. And also, miss the rear tire, miss the uh, suspension length that holds the bottom of the shock. And the pipes are quite snaky and windy uh, as they come up uh, out the chassis. We remove the front cowling which exposes the electronics. This black box here was the ECU that controlled the ignition. This is a power valve unit that had gears in there that would move these cables that were connected to exhaust port uh, valves that would move on RPM. Obviously this is the RPM gauge. It was very important, that's what I looked at most of the time temperature gauge, and this here is a switch out of my motorhome. Uh, at Donington Park in 1990, uh, there was a couple of low gear corners there, and the bike was very difficult to get out of the corner without it spinning out, so we, we tried to hold the power valves closed longer, and we just used a test using the switch. It didn't work. A couple of things going on here with the front of the bike. That year we used AP calipers to stop the carbon fiber disc. These covers here were used to keep temperature in the brakes, so I would have much better feel when I was using them. These locating holes were used when we raced the bike in the rain, we would replace the carbon disc with steel disc, which were much larger in diameter, so that's why we had to move the calipers to those locating holes. The oil and suspension that year came out with this like gold coating, which made the bike have much less stiction when using the bike on the brakes and through the corners. So all this technology was state of the art back in 1990. So obviously the fuel tank, a couple of cool design features this one had is uh, this little piece here was a little bit lower. So when I tucked in down the straightaway, my helmet would ride there so I could get a little bit better aerodynamically. The fuel tank was a little bit low, narrower in the back so I could uh, use the sides of the tank to change direction with the bike and also fit tied up against it going down the straightaway as well. Uh, the capacity of this fuel tank was 32 liters, just over 8 gallons. 
It weighed just over 50 pounds. Um, and at the end of the race, it was completely empty, just like it is now.